In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how your eye works and give you a chance to try some interesting eye physiology tests to see some of the different functions of your eyes. First of all, you can try a blind spot test. All you need for this is essentially two little spots objects that are a, a particular distance apart. You can find all this information on the internet or in a lab book where you can see there's a cross and a circle and this video will explain how they work. To do the blind spot test, what you want to do is hold your book straight out in front of you and stare with just one eye. Close the right one, keep the left one open at the circle. Keep staring at the circle as you bring your book slowly towards you, slowly, slowly, slowly. And you gotta keep looking at the circle. You can't think about the cross. And somewhere, the cross will disappear. Sometimes it only partially disappears, but it will disappear. To do the other eye, you do the same thing, but this time you close the left eye, you keep the right one open, and you stare at the cross. Stare, 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 stare wait for the circle to disappear or partially disappear. Sometimes you have to hold it a little further out to the side, but it will work. So after images are a little bit different. There are positive after images where you see pretty much exactly the same thing that you just saw. You might be really familiar with this if you are even a little bit light sensitive. If you catch a bright light and you look away from it, what do you see? Well, you see a flash of the bright light again. That would be a positive after image. In fact, positive after images are important when we're doing things like moving pictures or film because film is a bunch of small images broken up with lines in between them as it is on a film reel. And the main reason that the lines don't appear to us is because our brain maintains the image of each piece just a little bit longer, so the after image covers up the lines, which is really interesting. Negative after images, though, are when your eye gets fatigued, the nerves in your eye get fatigued, and because of that, it shifts the way that your cones catch different colors. So, I want you to try something. Stare at this flag. Specifically, there's a small white dot in the center of it. Stare really intently at that white dot. You want to keep staring at it and focus, focus, focus on it. Stay really focused, so much so that your eyes start to, oh my god, get really, really tired of staring at this funny looking green striped and yellow colored flag, but you got to keep staring and focus, 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 focus as hard as you can at that white dot in the center. And as soon as you think you are completely and utterly focused on that white dot in the center, now blink a couple of times. If you did it right, you might now see a properly colored American flag with red stripes and a blue background for the stars. If not, go back and try it again and maybe even pause on that flag a little bit longer. The key, too, is when you get to the white to relax a little bit before you move on. Here's another one to try. So, do the same thing. Stare very, very, very intently, in this case, at the black dot on the rainbow. The rainbow should look kind of weird to you, like it's not quite the right colors. But your goal is still to stare at that black dot. Stare at it very, very carefully. Focus in on the dot and on the rainbow. It might even start to get wavy and funky, but it is important to stay really, really focused. I'm trying to keep your eyes in one spot for at least 30 seconds or so, sometimes 30 to 45 seconds. But that is what you have to do to get them to fatigue. Once the nerves get really tired of staring at the same thing, that's when it makes the colors happen. And so I'm about ready. Keep staring, keep staring. Now when you blink, you should see a rainbow in the colors you expect, the red on the outside, all the way down to the purple on the inside. Isn't that cool? Here's the really cool thing about it. Think about the colors that you saw. So, the flag started out greenish and became reddish and yellowish and became bluish. Where are those on this color wheel? Oh, hey, they're right across from each other. It's because the colors that you see 
when you see a negative after image are complementary, meaning they are across the color wheel from each other. So the whole way the color wheel is set up is actually to our physiology and not because of some other random way of setting up colors. Next we'll talk about color blindness. You have multiple kinds of cones that pick up different wavelengths of color, and when they pick up those different wavelengths, your brain typically puts them together to see the entire spectrum of colors. But for some people, the cones don't pick up different wavelengths the same way, and so they'll see two colors as pretty much the same thing, which is a little bit funky. This is a genetic disorder. It's carried on the X chromosome. So men have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, and if their X chromosome has the gene for colorblindness, they are always colorblind because they don't have any other way to fix it. Women, however, would need two genes for colorblindness, so they are less likely to be colorblind, but more likely to pass it on to a son. Here's one of the major tests for colorblindness. Can you see in this image the different colors? The outside of the circle is mostly sort of a reddish brown. And on the inside, there's a 7 and a 4 in green. If it all looks the same to you, you might be colorblind. And if not, then you're okay and you can see all the different colors. This is one of the many tests that are used. Here's another. This one's even more obvious, where you can see the 12 right in the middle of the green circle. So colorblindness can be a major problem for people, especially when they're trying to navigate a world that uses color as a major distinguisher of things. For example, there are colorblind modes in many video games because you have to tell apart the different colors to be able to see things. Also traffic lights. If you think how traffic lights are set up, they are red and green for stop and go, which are the two colors most people cannot tell apart if you're colorblind. But they are always in the same place on the traffic signal. So even if you can't tell if it is red or green, you know if it's the top or the bottom, whether you should stop or go. Next, you're going to try a test for near point accommodation, which is the idea that your lens has to shift so you can see things that are very, very close to you, and it can get harder and harder to squeeze that part of the lens as you get older and older. This is why many older people have to hold something out so they can read. Their eyes cannot accommodate something coming very close to them. Check out this video to see how this might work, and you can test it. And you don't have a meter stick. You can do it with a string. So for instance, I've got this pencil here on this string, and I'm going to look at it with just one eye. And then I'm going to slowly bring it towards me, trying to keep the point of that pencil in focus until the point of that pencil ooh, starts to get kind of fuzzy. So the near point accommodation is how far it is. So at this point, all I need to do is bring it up to my face and say, well, that much string is how far that is. I can measure that with a regular old ruler in centimeters and say that pen was about 17 centimeters from my face when I lost focus on it, which if I look in my book says that I should be about 40 years old, which I definitely am. The last test that you can try on your own is an astigmatism test. An astigmatism occurs when the lens is shaped in such a way so that it has difficulty focusing light. And not just light that is either near or far the way you are farsighted or nearsighted, but really any light that comes in. So astigmatism can make a lot of things seem blurry and throw things a little bit out of proportion. This is an astigmatism test. If you do not have an astigmatism, all the lines look about the same. They are the same darkness, they are the same thickness, and they look like they are sitting in the same plane. If you do have an astigmatism, and especially if you can remove your corrective lenses, and you look at this, you might notice that some lines are darker than others. For me, I have a very strong astigmatism. Lines 12 and 6 are very dark, 
and lines 9 and 3 are very light and very fuzzy. And the other ones around it are each all a little bit different as it goes. I can try it with both of my different eyes, and I think I have more of an astigmatism in my right eye than my left, because my left is a little bit clearer and a little bit easier. And my right eye, the whole thing is like a carnival. If it looks like a very boring set of lines to you, you probably don't have an astigmatism. Your lab book also suggests doing an actual eye test in which you would stand 20 feet away from an eye chart and, and see how good your eyes are. And if you have the opportunity to try something like that, feel free. You could print something out off of the internet and see how good your vision is. Most people get this tested on a somewhat regular basis. You need to get your eyes tested anytime you get or update your driver's license. So they'll test it in that manner and other times. So most people are familiar with this test. But it's always good to have a sense of how your vision is and how it works, which is what this video is all about, testing your eyes and your eye physiology. Hope you enjoyed it.